Hey YouTube, welcome to our first webisode. We're sorry it took so long. We've just been kind of in the works trying to uh, do some other stuff as well, trying to prepare some pretty good material for you guys. I'm excited to teach a lot of you beginners uh, how to pick up your camera and start shooting and taking great photos. Um, this is really dedicated to all of you guys who've been shooting with a point and shoot and now want to move into more an advanced uh, style of photography and the only kind of photography you can get shooting with the DSLR you guys are gonna have a lot of fun learning uh, don't worry about all the buttons on your camera we're gonna go through those and we're gonna teach you guys how to do it now we're not gonna go through everything today we're not gonna cover all the little nuances of your camera but we are gonna start uh, out by covering the basics of photography uh, we're gonna uh, start by teaching you what your ISO is what your shutter speed is and what your aperture uh, once you start shooting in manual mode it opens up a whole nother world of photography uh, so we're gonna get you guys out of shooting with point and shoots and shooting in automatic settings so if you guys already have DSLRs we're gonna we're gonna teach you how to move that dial out of that green little square no more of that we're gonna teach you how to shoot with all the other modes I've been anxious to get this going and I'm really anxious to show you guys uh, how to shoot uh, some pretty good photography all right let's get going okay guys so here's what we're gonna start off with Let's talk about your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture, and what all three do. If you have to stop this and rewind this, please do so. If you want to grab a pen or a pencil or something to write on, if you have an iPad, you know, these days it's a little more sophisticated, go ahead and grab it, pause this, and let's just jump on this right away. Okay? What we want to start off with is your ISO, okay? Your ISO is basically your camera's sensibility to light. So the higher your ISO is, the more sensitive your camera is going to be uh, to light. We're gonna take a few photos uh, with a high ISO, so it's the picture's blown out, and a low ISO so you guys can see the difference. Aperture, your aperture is controlled by your lens. The wider your aperture is, the more light comes in through the camera. The smaller your aperture is, the less light that comes into your camera or hits your sensor. Now, your third and final one with this little trinity of, of uh, settings here is your shutter speed. Your shutter controls the duration of that light that hits your sensor. Okay, so the longer your shutter speed is, the more light that's gonna come in and hit your, uh, your sensor, and the brighter your pictures will be. The faster your shutter speed, the less light that comes in, okay? So those three elements are always important, especially with shooting in manual setting. You always wanna be able to control your images. And in shooting in manual, you determine the outcome and how your pictures are gonna look like. Let's go ahead and start shooting some pictures. I will put on the screen uh, all the settings that I'm using to shoot these images that you'll see. Uh, today I'm gonna be shooting with my 7D, uh, just in case we encounter a uh, hummingbird, which this area is known for a lot of hummingbirds here and I want to be able to use my fast shutter speed that's available on the 7D uh, to, to grab that hummingbird. Um, the 7D shoots at 8 frames per second, so it's very quick. Um, if you guys want to get a little dose of what that sounds like, I will do that right now. You can probably hear it. Oops. It's pretty fast, so if there is something moving very quickly, I can grab it pretty quickly. Uh, but don't worry about this, guys. Uh, you, with your cameras you have, trust me, we're going to take some excellent photos with pretty much whatever DSLR you have, okay? All right, let's go ahead and start taking some pictures. I did want to make a correction to what I said before in regards to sensibility. I think I might need some sensibility. I meant sensitivity. When you increase your ISO, your sensor becomes more sensitive to light as you can see in these images here. Uh, all we did with this image was increase the ISO to 500 and these are the results. All right guys, so as you can see uh, that test that we did, uh, tested the ISO. So this next part we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna work with our aperture. First we're gonna get a proper exposure with our aperture, then we're gonna increase and even decrease the aperture so that way you guys can see uh, how it affects your picture. There's two things that your aperture does. It controls the amount of light that comes into your camera or hits your sensor. Second thing it does, it controls your depth of field. The 
bigger your aperture is, the more shallower your depth of field. That's how you obtain those images where your subject is very sharp or whatever you're shooting is very sharp and your foreground and your background are blurred out. Uh, if you bump up that number to let's say even uh, 5.6 or 8, uh, then more of your image becomes in focus. So you have a broader depth of field. So every things that are behind you or in front of you will now come into focus. Uh, so that's what your aperture does. And we're gonna play around with those settings so you guys can get used to it. Like I said, if you have to pause this so you can take some sample shots yourself, go ahead and do so. Rewind it as many times as you need to until you learn, okay? So let's go ahead and start taking some pictures. So in this image we can see what a low aperture or f-stop can do uh, to an image. It really blurs out your background and brings into focus your foreground. The complete opposite happens when you increase your aperture to let's say 7.1 where it will bring most of your image, if not all of your image, into focus. Okay guys, uh, before we move on to our third and final part of uh, this tutorial, which is our shutter speed, uh, I hope you guys learned uh, what aperture does. So now let's move on to our uh, shutter portion of this tutorial and uh, we're going to capture some still images uh, of some something moving fast. We'll find something and uh, we'll take a picture of it uh, using a slow shutter speed and a fast shutter speed. As you can see with a fast shutter speed, your object or your subject looks like they were just frozen in time. Uh, with this next image that we've got coming up, uh, we slowed the shutter speed down to 100. Uh, we compensated by bringing up the aperture to about f14. Uh, so as you can see, there's a dramatic difference uh, with a fast and slow shutter speed. Hey, thank you guys again for tuning in. Uh, we wish you all the best. If you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, we want to thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, webisodes coming up on how to take uh, great photos. Uh, we want to turn you guys into experts. We want to take you from using point and shoot to using DSLRs. And if you're already using a DSLR, we want to help you familiarize yourself with your camera. Uh, and later on, you guys will bump up and move into more bigger cameras uh, like the D90s, 70s, 5Ds, and so forth. Okay, guys. So thank you very much. We'll see you guys soon. Take care. Oh, <laughs>